So I would say the most common question I get from my clients and colleagues, uh, fellow accountants and QuickBooks consultants is, how do I get my bank transactions imported into QuickBooks? So how do I get the transactions that are in my bank and put them into QuickBooks? And it's logical, right? Nobody really loves to do manual data entry. Um, so I want to show you step by step what are the different options out there on how to get the information into QuickBooks. However, what matters is how the data is formatted currently. For example, some banks allow you to download a .qbo file, often called WebConnect. Sometimes it's called an OFX file. So if your bank, and most major banks have this, if your bank gives you the ability from the bank's website to download a .qbo, so period QBO extension file, that is the single best way to download the transactions. Because once you have a .qbo file, you can import it into QuickBooks Desktop, um, into your bank feeds, or you can manually import it into your QuickBooks Online, into your online banking. And I'm going to show you examples of that uh, later on. Now, <clears throat> some banks do not have the ability to download the .qbo file. Alternatively, you can download maybe the bank statement in a PDF format. So if you can download that, that's great. There's going to be a, a, a tool that I use for that. I'm going to show you kind of how I do the PDF to QBO conversion. Sometimes uh, the bank will allow you to download the transactions in a CSV format. The CSV means comma separated values, which in a nutshell is um, how you can download the, the data in text, open it in Excel. You can actually make changes to it. And then you can use a tool, which I'm going to show you. It's basically the same tool where I can go from CSV into .qbo. Now, sometimes the bank allows you to download into .qif format, which is the legacy Quicken format. And if your bank allows you to download Quicken, then great, because the same tool that I use to convert everything to .qbo can also convert um, the QIF file. So in a nutshell, the best thing, and obviously for free, if you can download the .qbo file from the bank. If you can't get a .qbo file, then Excel, CSV, QIF, and PDF, all those things can be converted into .qbo, which towards the end of the video, I'll basically show you an example of actually putting that stuff into QuickBooks. So just for example, I'm in uh, Chase in the bank account, and I'm going to show you what it looks like in Chase. Now, unfortunately, I can't really show you an example for every single bank in the country, and every bank is going to be different. The website will look different. The interface will look different. However, at the point where you get to choose the type of file that you're going to download, um, that's when you you have that choice and you'll see what options your bank gives you. So I'm going to go into the bank account itself, right? So it just, usually you just click on the bank account itself. And somewhere um, in that screen, you should see a button that says download or download transactions or online banking or maybe something like that. It's typically going to say something like download or download activity. In the case of um, Chase, for example, it actually says download account activity. So I'm going to click on that. And then most like, for example, in the Chase screen, it, it gives you a choice to do uh, download or do direct access. So I, I'm not going to talk about direct connect or direct access um, just because if you already have direct access to the download, then you're not watching this video, obviously. But this is for people that don't have that direct connection. So they want to do the manual downloading. Now, in the case of Chase, for example, Chase, it's limited to two years. Um, so <clears throat> I think Bank of America, it's a year, if I'm not mistaken, and Wells Fargo, maybe one or two years, maybe 18 months. So every bank has a different policy. So in this case, I'm going to choose the bank account itself. And then here, this is the key here, select download type. So I'm going to zoom in here just to kind of show you what I mean. So in the case of Chase, it's great. Chase has the uh, Quicken Web Connect file. It has the Quicken QIF file. It has a QuickBooks IIF file. By the way, I never really use 
IAF files, a complete disaster. Then there's our QuickBooks Web Connect QBO. That's the first choice that I was talking about. Then Microsoft Money, I don't never use one. And then CSV. So actually Chase is a, is a great bank because it gives you all the different choices. So <clears throat> this QuickBooks Web Connect QBO, that's typically the preferred choice. Um, if you have that, then you're home free. Um, but if you don't have that, then this is what this video is about, is talking about, about the alternatives. So I'm going to choose, for example, <clears throat> QuickBooks Web Connect, and then I'm going to choose my date range. So like I said, I can go back two years. So I'll go back here uh, two years and then select my data range. And I'll kind of just give you an idea <clears throat> of what this looks like on the inside when you actually um, download it because it oh, it's nice to see so there's yeah so there's a limit of 24 months so in this case let me go ahead and pick a date that would fall into that 24 month range and click on download activity this typically takes 30 seconds to a minute for that whole download to come through so whether you're a PC or a Mac, it doesn't really matter. It usually downloads with the bank's name um, and then that .qbo. That, that's the file extension, the .qbo. And I'm going to open that in uh, Microsoft Excel just to kind of give you an idea what that looks like. This is what the file looks like when you open it in Excel. And honestly, it doesn't really matter what it looks like in Excel because you're not really going to be manipulating this. This looks like script or code, but this is the actual transactions one by one that actually come in through the bank. And QuickBooks understands this file and it's able to convert that to a, to a workable format in which you don't really have to do data entry. Now, if you don't have access to this .qbo file, I'm going to show you how to convert this .qbo file um, from different formats. However, let me first show you real quick um, how the .qbo files work really well inside of QuickBooks. So I'm here in QuickBooks Online, so I'm going to show you QuickBooks Online first. Up here on the top right, it says File Upload, and we're going to click on that, and we'll click on that button there and then it tells you select file to upload again this works exactly the same way uh, whether you're in a PC or a Mac I happen to be on a Mac but it's gonna be the exact same process um, for QuickBooks Online so I pick the file I hit next I select here the bank account that I want to connect so in this case I want to connect my check my Chase checking account and then I click on next after a few seconds to a minute, you will get this screen that says it's been successfully uploaded. And now um, in the case of this one, for example, you can see clearly 1500 transactions were uploaded into QuickBooks. Now, they're not straight into the register. You're still going to have to categorize these. Um, however, you know, as you categorize these transactions, it does get easier and easier. Like, for example, um, here it the information says Intuit Payment Solutions. So in this case, I would pick a vendor or create the vendor. Um, so in this case, I'm creating the vendor. I guess I've never used it before. It's actually a brand new a QuickBooks file. So I'm creating a vendor called Intuit Payment Solutions. And I'm going to put it here under uh, Bank Service Charges. Right? I mean, uh, we're not... We shouldn't really focus too much on how accurate that particular categorization is but what i'm trying to show you here is it we pick it once we pick the uh the, i should say service right bank service charges so it's spelling correctly would be helpful and then i'll click on add and one of the real cool things about online banking for example there was 86 transactions exactly like this one so when i click on recognized so i click on recognize there so you're going to see 86 transactions are similar and every single time this vendor was used it gets categorized to that category that i chose and that goes into the register like that so you can actually batch add 86 transactions extremely quickly so online banking it's not direct input but it does create uh, the workflow for you to direct, do direct input so in quickbooks desktop or quickbooks for windows um, the process is very similar. So let me go into the chart of accounts real quick and make sure a bank account is created. There it is. There's a bank account. Um, so I'm going to be uploading the transactions into that. Notice that that has a zero transactions for the time being. So I'm going to click on the file menu, utilities, import, web connect files. Right. So that was the process. So I went to file and went down to utilities, import, and then web connect files so i click on that and the system's going to ask me uh, what file would you like to import and there it is there's the file i, download, I downloaded from chase so i click on open 
then the system's asking me, well, which account would you like to link it? So I'm going to hit uh, use existing account, hit the drop down and select this one here called bank. Click on continue. So it tells me your web connect data has been successfully uploaded. I'll click OK. Now, this is the bank feed screen. And if you're working with QuickBooks 2013, 2014, 2015, or 2016, so 2013 or above, it will look like this. <clears throat> if it's older than 2013, the screen looks different. However, the process is extremely similar. So I'm going to click here on transaction list, and there are all my transactions. So I can do the same thing I did um, with here that I did with the other one. So I can, in this one, for example, I can call it here into it merchant solutions what, whatever i want to call it right so i get to create the vendor and i'm going to put that onto uh, bank service charges and then i'm going to click on quick add and then what will happen is um, quickbooks will start reading similar transactions so if you see up here on the top it says 100 transactions are similar when i click on that you get to see how transactions that have are recognized as something that has been used before get automatically Categorize. Now, I don't have to accept them, right? I can I can correct these. Like if these are not supposed to, uh, they're not linked correctly, then I can make the changes and QuickBooks will start learning as I go. But that is the concept of online banking by manually uploading a .qbo file. So let's move on to uh, PDF bank statements. So first, before we go into um, the conversion of PDF bank statements, uh, into this .qbo format and then it can be downloaded into QuickBooks using the bank feeds in QuickBooks desktop or the bank downloads in QuickBooks online, as I just showed you. It's important to know <clears throat> whether your PDF bank statement is an origin original PDF you downloaded from the bank or if it's a bank statement that was on a paper, printed paper that you scanned and therefore you turned into PDF. So here's a, a PDF bank statement I have of, of a credit card. It's, it's actually the same thing. It could be credit card or it could be bank. Um, they actually both work. And the way you know um, that a PDF is the original version from the bank is because every single field can be selected or highlighted. Like in this case, I can select this text. And if you see the text um, that you can select it or perfectly highlight it, this means this is already in digital format and these are the original PDFs from the bank. So if you're working with the original PDFs from the bank, you can use a, a tool called PDF to QBO. And I'm gonna put the links there below in the video. Or you can use a tool called .qbo convert pro, which is pretty much the same thing as PDF to QBO, but it has a couple of more settings built in. So here's this is the tool that I'm that I'm talking about, and whether you use PDF to QBO or Tube QBO convert pro, either one tool, it's actually going to have the exact same behavior. So the first thing is I click here on settings, and I have to tell it. Uh, whether this is a bank or a credit card because QuickBooks is going to, sorry, this software is going to convert this to a .qbo format that QuickBooks is going to read and QuickBooks has to know um, what type it is, right? So I'm going to select credit card. Then I'm going to click here where it says look up so I can select the bank. So I'm going to search Chase. And if your bank is not there, it actually doesn't matter which bank you choose. Um, however, if for consistency, it's good to just choose the correct one if it happens to be there on the list. So I'll hit OK. And it's important to put uh, the bank account number or at least uh, the last four digits. It's, it could be an identifier, especially if you're converting multiple files. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And then I'm going to click on Convert. OK, then it's going to ask me, well, where's the file you want to convert? So Mine happens to be on the desktop, so I'll go ahead and pick up. Um, I'll go ahead and pick up that PDF file, and then I can either just go straight to a conversion, um, which I convert to CSV, um, which is which we'll talk about a little bit later on as I talk about CSV to QBO conversion. I can go straight to convert to QBO and allow the software kind of do this magic. But you can go to preview. This is actually my favorite thing to do because when I click on preview, I'm going to get a grid, and with this grid 
shows me it, it's a it's a quick preview of the transactions that it read um, so I can actually just double check that the software is doing what it's supposed to be doing um, I can check the dates and see if the dates are correct I can see how it read uh, the pay information I can see if it read the amount information um, and then down here I get to uh, make sure that I map it so if for whatever reason it read it correctly um, but it didn't map it then I get the chance to map it now when, when you have digital PDFs, like with the example that I showed you, this software is pretty much flawless because everything is in digital format. When you have to read, uh, I'm sorry, when you have to read statements that were scanned, um, this could get a little bit more random. So it requires you to tweak the settings a little bit more. Now, something I really like up here, it tells me what your total credits are, what your total debits are, um, and allows you to, for example, double click your uh, bank statement real quick and you can actually verify there in the summary if the total uh, payments and the total charges were accurate so sort of a quick um, automatic reconciling just to make sure that the data is going to be complete and I want to go ahead and click on create QBO and then the software will uh, create this dot QBO file now as I showed you before there you can go to file utilities import web connect and I'm gonna go ahead and choose that file that I just converted and hit open. Then it's gonna ask me which credit card would you like to use? Because in this particular example, we use the credit card. So I'm gonna call a credit card here, uh, Visa. I'll call it uh, Chase Visa. And you're gonna see the import scheme. Um, it works exactly the same way as the bank. So this software actually works for importing both uh, bank statements and uh, credit card statements. So I'm gonna click on transaction list to just kind of show you, and there it is. There's the dates, the, the name of the downloaded name, and the amount. So what's great about this is all I really have to do is uh, put the vendor's name, right? Uh, and, and if it's already on my database, then I just select it and select the account, and then click here on quick add and it will add it for me. And as you enter more and more, QuickBooks will learn. This is why this is my favorite way of importing bank transactions into QuickBooks. Now onto uh, bank statements or credit card statements that were scanned. Um, so let me show you, this is basically the same bank statement that I, uh, that I went ahead and I printed and scanned. Uh, and you're gonna see the behaviors a little bit different. So let me go ahead and, and open it. And what's typically different about this is I click and click and click and I try to select these uh, numbers and it doesn't allow me to select it. So when you actually scan the statement and obviously there's imperfections, uh, there could be creases, there could be markings that can affect this whole thing. But if I try to select the text like I'm trying to, I'm clicking and I'm trying to do it now, um, that's really when you know, whoops, that's really when you know that this is not the original uh, PDF. So what happens with this exact same tool with um, PDF to QBO or to QBO Convert Pro, um, there is a, a version called the PDF Plus version that can actually read scanned statements. So let me go through the same process here. I'm gonna go ahead and just change the account number. So when I import it into QuickBooks, it doesn't import into the same account. And I'm gonna click on Convert. And I'm gonna go ahead and select that statement and click on Preview. And you see it will take a little bit longer it goes through the process because it's actually reading the image and using uh, OCR optical character recognition to uh, to detect uh, the the names and the amounts and the dates and all that good stuff. Now, when it finishes reading, and it will take longer if you're using a, a scanned statement. And it's not a perfect science yet. You know, I, I would much prefer use a digital statement to about to avoid these potential issues. Um, here's uh, the columns of how it detected the information, and you can actually see here payee, and this is where the mapping matters, right? This is where I tell it, well, that's that's payee, and this is the date. So this is where I tell it, this is the date, and then we see the amount, and then the memo. So it looks. Uh, very similar and as I scroll down I get to see all the transactions and for example in this particular case um, it didn't it didn't detect any of the payments so for whatever reason um, it actually took in all the expenses but not the payments and you can see up here on the auto reconciliation feature you can see look there's a uh, there's credits, but but no debits. And, and again, it's not a perfect science. If you need to add them manually, you can click here where it says add transaction and you can scroll all the way down, uh, actually all the way 
whatever you clicked and then you can actually manually <clears throat> add the the one payment let's say that happens to be a five thousand dollar payment whatever whatever it is and we'll put here payment and so so if you for whatever reason it missed one or two you can manually put it in there again it's much better if you have the digital a statement um, but if it has the PDF it could do a lot of the work for you and at that point I would go to create QBO and import it into QuickBooks the same way I did it with the other ones now what if I don't have the dot QBO file and I don't have the bank statements in PDF but I do have an Excel file or a CSV file so the most important thing is make sure that the spreadsheet has at the very minimum, at the very minimum, it should have these three columns, which are date, payee, or description. It doesn't matter. It's the same sort of concept and amount where negatives are the charges or checks and positives are the deposits or payments in a credit card. Now, the optional columns you can have are a memo, transaction number, and have a debit and credit column instead of a single amount column let me fix that there um, so those are the optional uh, columns but date payee and amount is extremely important so this is for example um, a spreadsheet that i have okay and then whether this spreadsheet was downloaded from the bank or it was created manually notice that uh, all i really need is three columns date payee an amount and I'll go ahead and delete that to show you so as long as I have these three columns here uh, the software can do is its bidding now the nice thing about having it on Excel uh, for for a couple reasons uh, nice thing about having on Excel is if you got checks um, and you want to hand write all the payees in there it's a great uh, tool uh, to use in, before you import it into QuickBooks that way you don't have to retype everything in QuickBooks also uh, this is great for petty cash logs you know so that's not really a bank but if you have a lot of petty cash logs in uh, in excel you can convert them into dot qbo which is going to be great for you to be able to import that into quickbooks so i'm going to go ahead and save save this uh, csv file and show you how that works in this converter software so for csv specifically you can use a tool called CSV to QBO. But again, I use the to QBO convert, which is the accounting tool that has all the file formats. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on settings and I'm gonna tell it, well, this is a, a bank account or credit card, whatever it happens to be. I'm gonna put the account number. In this case, I just put the last four digits and then I hit okay. Then I'm gonna click on convert <clears throat> and I'm gonna select that CSV file I have there. I'll click on preview just to double check that the data is being read correctly. And there it is. There's my date column. There's my payee column. There's my amount column. And then down here, you see that the mapping is correct. And I click on create QBO. And now I have my QBO file, which I can import to QuickBooks Desktop or QuickBooks Online. So what are your options? So let's talk about scenario number one. Uh, I show that at the very beginning of this video if your bank allows you to download the .qbo files then you're home free okay this video wasn't focused on how to use online banking or bank feeds there's we have other videos in our channel that focuses on you know what best tips and tricks on what to do there but if you can download the .qbo file then it's great you have you don't pay anything for it it's free it can import into quickbooks online or quickbooks desktop however if you don't have access to the .qbo files this is option number two you have the digital pdf statements then you need either pdf to qbo or to QBO Convert Pro. Those are the two options there. Um, third option is, let's say I don't have the digital PDF, but I have a scanned PDF. So I have a scanned paper bank statement. Then I need to get PDF to QBO with the plus or to QBO Convert with the plus. That plus basically means that it can actually read scanned PDF statements. And finally, the fourth uh, situation here, let's say I have the data in Excel or a CSV file, then all I need is CSV to QBO. Now, I'm in the website here uh, for the vendor, for the manufacturer of this, uh, of this software that I'm recommending, and I use it all the time for my practice, and that's why I, I, I made this video, because I use it, I love it, um, I, I worked hand-in-hand -hand with a developer 
to make it better. You know, all the time I'm suggesting new features. People email me and say, Hector, I would love that 2QBO convert pro can do this or I could do that. So I usually talk to the developer and, and, and we talk through it, we test it. And this is incredibly uh, time saver, especially when my, my client doesn't have access to the bank. It just has PDF bank statements. And this allows me to really, really quickly go through it. But anyway, let me show you the website. So here on the right side, there's all the software programs. There's 2QBO Convert Pro. There's PDF to QBO Convert. <clears throat> and then down here, there's CSV to QBO. Now, one of the main questions that people ask me is, uh, Hector, what's the difference between the 2QBO Convert Pro and PDF to QBO? So the difference is that PDF to QBO is a single utility. It takes your PDF bank statements, converts them to QBO, done. Whether they are scanned or digital, it just means that you have to get that plus version that costs a little bit more. But what 2QBO Convert Pro, it combines multiple tools. So, so that's what I call the accountant tool, the person that works with multiple file types. So this one can convert uh, CSV files, as I mentioned earlier. It can, it can do QIF files. These are the Quicken uh, versions. So some banks can only download into Quicken. It can do the PDF, of course. And it can do some really cool things, like it can actually take a regular QBO file and convert it into CSV. CSV, so you can make some edits and then go from CSV to QBO, and then you can actually manipulate uh, the type of data that goes in there. Now, in terms of pricing, I prefer not to discuss it in this video because I've seen the price change uh, <clears throat> over time. Um, so, but you know, ranging from under $100 for the CSV to QBO, all the way to two or three hundred dollars for the for the highest end tool. If you're working with multiple clients or multiple bank statements, and you want to save yourself hours of manual data entry, then I strongly recommend this product.